Did you know that over the past year, around 150 asteroids whizzed closer to Earth than the Moon? But that's not the scary part. It's that some were only noticed after they flew by. And if even one of those had taken a slightly different path, whole cities would be gone. That's what keeps the scientists worried. The invisible stuff hiding where our telescopes can't see. Let's explore what that means. Astronomers keep a list of asteroids that wander into our neighborhood. If a rock's orbit comes close to Earth, it joins a special club we call Near-Earth Objects, or NEOs. That list can include anything from a harmless little space pebble that wouldn't break a window to a rock big enough to cause an Earth-shattering kaboom. NEOs are leftover materials from when the planets were forming. Some of that rubble ended up tucked safely in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, but some pieces got nudged onto paths that cut across Earth's orbit. Those are the ones we care about, because they're still wandering around today, looping around the Sun, and every now and then passing uncomfortably close to us. The biggest objects are the easiest to locate. They are rare and bright enough that they stand out in sky surveys. So far, none of those big ones seem to be heading our way anytime soon. However, the real anxiety comes from the middle class of asteroids. On paper, many of them sit in the Potentially Hazardous Object category, or PHOs, but the nickname City Destroyer explains them better. These rocks aren't huge enough to wipe out the planet, but they could flatten a city and mess with the climate for a few seasons. Some are as wide as a football stadium and hit the atmosphere faster than a speeding projectile. NASA estimates there are around 25,000 near-Earth asteroids at least 460 feet wide, but we've only discovered a fraction of them. Basically, we have solid orbits for less than half of the city destroyer crowd. The rest only exist as numbers in simulations. We know they should be out there, we just haven't seen them yet. Why are they so hard to spot? Some asteroids are nearly coal black, blending into the cosmic night. Others hang out close to the sun from our perspective, so our telescopes get overwhelmed by brightness. It's like trying to locate a mosquito while staring directly at the sunlight. Please don't do this. From Earth, these rocks are mostly lost in the sun's glare. We only catch a glimpse just after sunset or right before sunrise. And that chance only exists if the sky is perfectly clear and the asteroid happens to be in exactly the right spot. If not, it slips back into the sun's blind spot, playing hide-and-seek with us. We were caught by surprise quite recently. In 2013, the Chelyabinsk meteor came from the direction of the rising sun. No one saw it in time because it was coming from the wrong direction. It exploded high above the region, shattering windows across the city and sent more than a thousand people to the hospital. The scariest part is that the meteor was only about 60 feet wide. Now imagine a city destroyer coming from that same direction. A stadium-sized rock stepping out of the sun's glare would give us very little warning, maybe a few days or a week instead of decades. And we know that the blind zone is not empty. Observations have already revealed at least one large asteroid in that region that scientists can seriously consider a planet destroyer. It's called 2022 AP7, and it's huge. This thing is more than half a mile wide, big enough that if it ever hit Earth, it would be a catastrophic day for everyone. Astronomers found it by using the super-sensitive dark energy camera during twilight, pointing the telescope at the region of the sky most surveys normally avoid it. The good news is that AP7 isn't headed straight for Earth. Its orbit crosses the orbit of our planet, but the timing doesn't line up, so we won't encounter it this pass, the next one, or even for several centuries. The bad news is what that discovery hints at. If it took this much effort to notice something like this, what else are we missing? And 2022 AP7 is just one PHO. Other asteroids closer to the Sun were also spotted during those same twilight searches. New simulations say some of those hidden rocks are not random. A bunch of them seem to share an orbit with Venus. 
They do not orbit Venus itself. They orbit the Sun in almost the same lane, sometimes a bit ahead of the planet, sometimes a bit behind, like kids jogging on the same track but spread out along the lap. Astronomers already know about roughly 20 of those Venus co-orbitals, and their paths are anything but stable. Gravity from Venus, Earth, and other planets keep tugging on them, and over thousands of years, those poles could stretch their paths until they start crossing Earth's orbit. Most flybys are harmless, but one unlucky pass could be the one that counts. So what can we do about this? The first step is simple in theory. Find them earlier. The goal for astronomers is to launch infrared telescopes and get them into space. While we do have amazing telescopes like JWST or the Hubble Space Telescope, they're never pointed at the Sun, as the brightness of our star can damage them. That's why we need a telescope in orbit around Venus, or one that travels along with it. It would be in a much better spot to keep an eye on the asteroids that hang out there. NASA is launching the NEO Surveyor project that aims to solve the problem. It should scan the inner solar system to spot dangerous asteroids in time. Also, we're learning that we can actually move asteroids. NASA's DART mission rammed a small spacecraft into a rock, which affected its orbit slightly. Not by much, just enough to prove that it can be done. It's like turning a plane just one degree while it's still across the ocean. By the time it reaches you, that tiny change can make it miss by thousands of miles. Teams around the world spend their days babysitting space rocks. And yes, that's a real paying job. NASA has the Planetary Defense Coordination Office. Europe has the NEO Coordination Center. Observatories feed them nightly sky data and computers immediately check each dot's orbit. If a rock might wander too close, it joins the risk list and gets extra attention. Each new photo updates the orbit a little more, sometimes that make the danger level rise for a moment. That is exactly what happened with 2024 YR4, when it briefly reached level 3 on the Torino scale before better measurements calmed everyone down. The scale itself runs from 0 to 10, and anything that climbs above 3 is rare enough to raise eyebrows. The whole system works that way on purpose. Notice something strange, collect more data, then decide whether to relax or stay alert. Most of the job is actually pretty dull. It's a lot of number checking, orbit fixing, and crossing out false alarms. That quiet, careful routine is what lets the world respond quickly when a rock finally appears that isn't just passing by. So how worried should we be? For those huge planet-destroying rocks, the short answer is not much. Nothing that size is on the near-term schedule. Smaller, city-level threats are trickier. The odds of one hitting Earth anytime soon are still tiny, but they're not zero. Think of it as a cosmic lottery that has been running for billions of years. Every once in a very long while, the universe draws a number that makes astronomers sit up and pay attention. It's not a reason to panic. It's a reason to build better eyes in space and make sure that if a bad ticket ever comes up, we see it in time to do something about it. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.